Hello, this video provides you with the basic information to help you get started creating your own VB scripts. What is a VB script? It is nothing but a text file. Let me open this up here and you can see this is a really simple script here. It doesn't do a whole lot, it's nothing too fancy, but it's just it's meant to illustrate the basics of what a VB script file is. Like I said, it's nothing but a text file, but a text file by itself, it doesn't really do anything. What you have to do is you have to change the file extension to VBS. And now it's going to ask you if you want to actually change that extension or not. We're going to say yes. Now that a file extension has been changed, it's a VB script file that we can actually execute. So if we double click on that VB script file, we see that it actually does something. Not a whole lot of anything useful really. Um, basically it just displays back the phrase my computer name is. So it's not really even telling us much of anything useful that is. So let's go ahead and click OK. Now instead of using Notepad, I'm going to use Notepad Plus. It's a program that I prefer to use because it offers some additional features than what just simple notepad does. And it's also a free application that you can download. Just do a simple Google search for Notepad++ and you should be able to find it. Now what does it do that Notepad doesn't do? Well, when you're working with VBS files, it will color code the different components of the VB script file. Anything that's commented out will be green, like this. Any system reserved words will be colored blue. Everything else will, you know, if it's a string, will be gray. Any variables that you may have with inside your script file will be black. Um, another nice feature is if you're looking at a specific variable like this right here, you can double click it and anywhere within your script file that is using that variable will be highlighted. So the line option explicit tells the script that every variable that you're going to be using within the script file needs to be defined before it's actually able to be used. So as an example here there's actually a, a an error with this script file we have the variables reg computer name and computer name. And if you notice, we also have a variable in here called computer names. So this is actually a typo. Even though they look very similar, they are actually different. So if we go here, we have option explicit turned on now. So if we click save, If we move this over, execute the VB script file, you see we get an error. And then the error tells us that there is a problem with line 10. This again is where uh, Notepad++ becomes useful because we know exactly which line it is. Because Notepad++ numbers each line that you use within your script file. It also gives us a little bit of information about the error. Here we have right here variable is undefined and it's telling us what is undefined. Computer names. And we can see right here this is what's undefined with inside of the script file. So we'll click OK. If we go in here, correct that error, click save. Now if we run it, the VB script file actually works and it gives us a little bit more useful information than what it did before. So now we see exactly what the computer name is. So if we click OK on that. The second line on error resume next is also a useful line, but it shouldn't be used until after you are actually deploying the script file. 
what it does is it suppresses errors that you get and it does exactly what it says when there's an error it just resumes the script file so instead of getting an error message when it's ran even if there is an error in the script file it's just going to continue running like there's no problems whatsoever so let's go like this just to illustrate this I'm going to put that error back inside of the script file we're going to leave option explicit turned on but we're going to turn off or we're going to turn on rather on error resume next so let's go ahead and save go here and if we execute this VB script file we see it doesn't work because this is incorrect but we also don't get any type of scary error message either the rationale for using on error resume next is simple you just don't want people to see error messages in your script file even though you know you shouldn't deploy it unless you've thoroughly tested your script file there's always the chance that you may accidentally inadvertently overlooked something having on error resume next makes the script file run cleaner because they don't see any error messages when the script file is actually being run this is particularly useful if you're using a script file for a login script so now let's look at the other lines in this VB script file the third line is uh, defining a variable called objects shell and uh, we define it by using the command dim also referred to as dimming a variable so we're right here this line dims object shell line 4 dims these two variables and it also shows that you don't necessarily need to have a separate line for each variable that you define you can define them with one one variable after another just by separating them with a comma now if we go down here and look at line 6 we can see this variable right here is getting this string value here and basically what the string value is is nothing but a registry key the string value also shows you at least this line shows you that you can have a string value and then if you need to carry it across to the next line you can do that by adding an ampersand and underscore this tells the VB script file that the string variable that you have here that you're defining is actually carried over to the next line so line 7 is nothing but the rest of line 6 now let's go down to the next line which is line 9 and that's setting this object shell variable that we defined here and using the function create object using wscript.shell so that creates this object here and now with this object now that it's created we use the function dot reg read to read this variable which is this registry key here takes the value from this registry key and puts it into this variable computer names now this last line here anytime you see wscript.echo all this means is this is going to present a window it's going to pop up on the screen somewhere so wscript.echo presents um, my computer name is and then this ampersand computer name which is again this variable here that we got here which is the, the computer's name that we're pulling from the registry so this whole line right here displays my computer name is and then the computer name and this text string that's in here this is nothing but a simple text string where we can go in here and we can change it and modify it so if we want to we can do something like this computer name save it let's also go in here and fix this error we'll save that as well 
move that over to the side here. Let's execute this VB script file. And there you go. You can see instead of saying my computer name is, it's now just saying computer name colon and then the computer name. All right, let's click OK on that. Um, and we'll just uh, sum it up, uh, we just went over a real simple VB script file. Went over the commands option and explicit, which forces the VB script file to define all the variables that we'll be using by dimming them. And we also went over the on error resume next, which does exactly what it says. If there's an error, it just goes to the next line and ignores that error. And that's pretty much it. So I. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. And thanks for watching.